Hello lovely people. Today I want to show you something that I think is really, really cool. Um, I was at a Marillion weekend. Marillion's my favourite band. Um, you may remember them back from the days when Fish was the lead singer. Um, but uh, long since Fish has moved on, uh, we've got this new guy, Steve Hogarth, which is this guy here. So I was in the crowd and I had my camera, which is allowed at the Marillion weekends, and I took a panorama of sorts... Um, which is these four shots here. There's a, there's a fifth, but it's kind of taken a, a few seconds earlier. And um, so these four are the four I'm going to use. And I'm going to attempt to stitch these four pictures using Photoshop. And um, just bear in mind when we do this that the performers moved, the lights moved, um, the camera moved, you know, time moved on. <laughs> So there's a lot changing in these shots. So I'm going to just, I've selected all four, that, that means click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and then I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to choose, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So I'm going to choose that. This might take a moment, so I might just fast forward here. Some sequences shortened or sped up. Okay, let's have a look at these four images. We've got, um, I'll just turn off the layers so you can see what we've got in each one. So we've just got all four layers, uh, all four images opened as separate layers, all just stacked on top of each other at the moment. Now, you, you're probably aware that Photoshop can do panorama stitching. Um, I don't know whether or not you're aware that you can actually sort of tell it to do it the manual way. So here's what you're gonna do. Um, first of all, we're gonna have a quick look at these and figure out what we like because I'm going to come to these later and decide what out of these I want to use. Now, um, I think out of these, I like the way Steve's looking the best in the first one. He's not looking so great there. He's got his hand in front of his face there. That one's not bad, but I think that one's just a little better. So we're going to take Steve from the first one. I also like the way there's this l orange light behind the spotlight up here. If you look at... If I take that away... See, there's nothing much going on up there now. And the others, that one's not bad, but I think the first one's better. Um, and then the final thing I want I wanted to get in from another layer is, you see how this spotlight here is hitting straight into the lens? I, I like the way that adds a load of drama to the shot, so I'm going to try and get that bright spotlight from the second layer down. So I've got Steve on the first layer and that orange light above him. And I've got the spotlight on the second layer that's hitting straight into the lens. So what we're going to do is I'm going to click on the first layer here. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on the last layer. And that's selected all four layers in my layers palette. Now I'm going to go up to the edit menu. And I'm going to choose auto align layers. And this is exactly what Photoshop is doing when you tell it to do a panorama and a stitch. We're just doing this in two steps manually now, instead of doing it using the uh, the automated process. So once again, this might take a moment. Oh no, no, it's done. Look at that. How quick? How quick was that? So it's lined up these layers now. If I just zoom out, you can see where the edges of these layers are. And you might look at that and think, well, that's not very good, John. No, that's because we're not finished. Um, but we can see that it has found these things line up pretty well. Look at the uh, the amp stacks behind Steve there. Um, the other Steve. Rothery, not Hogarth. Um, it's lined them up absolutely perfectly. So if I just go down, and again, let's just look. There's Look at all the gear around Mark Kelly there. That's all beautifully lined up. And once again, at the bottom layer, not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not going to cause us a problem because um, this is only giving us just this edge bit with some crowd in it. So that's a pretty impressive job. Considering how much stuff is changing and moving in this shot, I think that's very impressive. Now, there's one step more we need to do before we can uh, finish this off. So I'm going to go to the Edit menu again, and I'm going to choose Auto Blend Layers. And this is going to... Just say OK on that. This is going to decide which bits of each layer to use to make the final blended panorama. So give it a moment again. This might take a second or two. I'm working with full-sized uh, RAW files here. Uh, normally I would work with JPEGs just to try and speed up the demo, but um, I think this one benefits from having the full-size version because then you can see just how huge the final, the final image is. Nearly done. Right, there we go. Right, so... 
right away, I think you'll agree that is pretty impressive. Um, but we've got those bits that we wanted to get. So look at the way this does um, uh, its blending. It's actually made a layer mask on each of these layers, and it's got black where it wants to hide that part of that limit, that layer, and white where it wants to reveal. So white to reveal, black to conceal, um, and we've just got white in the la in the layer mask to include. So in the case of the first layer, you can see which bits of the image are coming from from layer one. And if I turn that off and go down to layer two, you can see which bits are coming from layer two and layer three and layer four. So that's how the image is built up. And Photoshop just did that itself. It just figured out where to make those edges so that it looks good. Um, now we want to just uh, change the priorities a little bit here and there. So I'm going to just choose the layer mask on layer one. And remember, we wanted Steve Hogarth here from layer one. And he's not currently on. He's not currently coming from layer one. He's currently coming from layer three, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that layer mask. I'm going to grab a brush which is the B key, or this button here. And I'm going to choose white. So D selects black and white, X swaps black and white over. So I'm going to choose a white brush, and I'm just going to paint white on the layer mask. Not on the layer, on the layer mask. I'm going to paint white on the layer mask, and I'm just going to paint Steve in. Now look, if I come down here, I'm, I'm getting a, a ghostly hand. So let's just paint down into the crowd a little bit so we've not got a ghostly hand, so there's some people for that hand to be attached to. But there's Steve. And I'm seeing a little bit of glow over here, so I'm going to just let that come out. And look, I get this nice I get this nice spotlight coming up from up there as well. So let's just zoom back out a little and just see what else we get if I paint in more from layer one. And remember we wanted this spotlight up here behind there? Right, there it is. So I'm now getting that spotlight from layer one. I don't want to go too far. So I'm just going to go back to black and just bring back what we had before from just to the side of that. Now there was one other element that we wanted from another layer and that was the the big light hitting the lens. So if you remember it's this light here I think or this one here I don't remember which. Um, so let's go to the layer mask and on layer 2 and once again X to choose white as my main color and I'm going to just do it was that one. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to do a big dollop of white on the layer mask there. And I think I might just have a look and see what's going on down here as well. Ah, oh, look. There we go. Mark Kelly looking a little bit better lit there behind all his, behind all his keyboards. Okay, I'm going to stop there because you get the idea. The final step, of course, is just to crop this. So I've just pressed the C key for the crop tool, which is also this button here. And if I just drag this down and drag this up and now I need to rotate the background rotate the image until it's level because it wasn't anywhere near level and then let's drag that side in because we don't really need all that stuff at the side there uh, likewise there I quite like seeing the lights at the top though so I'm going to leave that little area there I'm going to just press the tick button at the top to crop that give it a moment There. And we'll do a final step. I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to stamp layer, which is Command Option Shift N and then Command Option Shift E. Control Alt Shift N, Control Alt Shift E makes a new layer and then stamps visible into it. So on that layer, I'm going to just do a little selection in the corner there. We don't need to select quite that much. Let's just zoom that down a little bit. We only need to fill just as much as we can, as little as we can get away with. And if I right click in that, if I right click in that and choose fill with content aware, press OK. Oh, that's not done a great job. Let's see if we can try again. No, OK, that's not, not working. Right then. Sometimes it takes two or three goes to get a good job here. Just try taking different areas until... There we go, that's a bit more like it. That's a bit more like it, right. So just changing the area that you pick uh, will change the results you get. 
and I am going to call that pretty darn finished. Uh, what I would do from here, I'm not going to bother showing you that today because really I wanted to show you the blend, but what I would normally do from here then is take that back into into Lightroom and start working on it and make sure I bring out a bit, a bit more detail, bring out a bit more colour and uh, just generally try and give it that vibrant concert feeling, uh, maybe add a vignette because I do that. Thank you very much for watching guys, uh, I'll catch you in the next tutorial, bye bye. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Thank you.